Can everyone hear me without the mic? No. Uh, can I please use the mic? Yes. Yeah. I was hoping I didn't have to. Okay. Uh, thank you, Iris. Um, thank you, everyone, for being out here today and for taking the time to, to you know, let me grace the, the stage. Um, and and really, everything they've said so far is is, is really really. You, know, you should you should take that with you. Whoever is not a mentor, you guys need to you know, step up, think about it, at least attend an informational session or come in, speak to Mike. Um, you know, I, I used to work for Big Brothers Big Sisters, and I've really seen the impact that they have on, on kids' lives. So it's definitely something that's important in the Um I'm going to do two pieces for you tonight. Um, I was I was struggling all day, and I, I was speaking to Sabrina, and I was speaking to Mike about what I should do today. So I'm going to do one that I feel like kind of vibes with the night, and then um, if you guys are nice, then maybe I'll get a little bit more personal, um, and we'll dig in there a little bit. Um, and maybe after we get personal, someone can buy me a drink. <laughs> I watched a little girl play in front of her building. Summer keys to summer breeze, her laughter is contagious. She skips on chalked out hopscotch boxes, jump roping, hoping the sun never sets. She is the princess of the pavements, protected only by her beliefs and life joys and her older sister. Two girls spending their days all alone, one no older than six, avoiding the daily hardships of cooties and bugs, the other, 14, reaching the age where boys no longer pull their hair when they like you. Two girls spending their days all alone, mother working three jobs cause daddy's never home, daddy's never been home, daddy's never coming home. Oldest, forced to play the role of mother, sister, father, protector, no older than 14. She protects her summer feet from the summer heat and flip flops with flowers on them. She stares at them, convincing herself that she is as beautiful as these flowers. Cause her feeling of self-worth has been destroyed, she yearns for the attention of boys cause so, because so, affection has never been taught to her. So she sits there, open, not knowing this openness can lead to pain cause no one ever taught her life's lessons, no one ever explained love to her. Mother working three jobs cause daddy's never home, daddy's never been home, daddy's never coming home. Youngest, still skipping on the clouds of young freedom. Too young to understand their life, too old to avoid it. The oldest, too young to change it, too old to forget it. See, daddy's never been home, but her mind is filled with memories of temporary daddies who showed love through anger because good children are disciplined children. If it wasn't for your mother, I'd throw you little rats out right now. She remembers memories that the youngest never witnessed, because see, a black eye is worth the protection of a bedroom door and the love of a sister. She buys her sister another quarter water as another boy hisses. She feels wanted. She wants to feel wanted. She's never felt wanted. She sits there, watching people's lives pass, wondering if they're different, wishing she can spend five minutes with someone else. Two girls in the same house living two lives. One, living in a prison of neglect. The other, the freedom of youth. Both, still believing in love. Both. Still loving the summer breeze, both knowing that tomorrow is fall. Reminded by a seasonal leaf falling in between one hop and another scotch. The youngest picks up the leaf, and suddenly she wonders if daddy like leaves. Suddenly, like the season, she changed. She turns to her older sister and asks, tell me about daddy. The older sister stares at her, turning innocence turn seeing innocence turn to emptiness, remembering the stories made up because no one ever told her daddy wasn't coming home. And as she stares at her, she grits her teeth, knowing until she takes her last breath, she will be the only one to protect this little girl. Her protector, her savior, her mother, her sister, her father, her brother, everything. So as she stands there and stares at this little girl, she says, Daddy's not home. Daddy's never been home. Daddy's not coming home. But I love you. The summer ends.
So should we get a little bit more personal now? Yeah. Okay, I have this one written down though, is that fine? Yeah. You guys are great though. You, I mean, if you, you can do anything you want, you can do, ooh, ah, that's cool too. Oh my god, I can't believe you just said that. You can tap the person next to you, like, oh my god. I'm gonna cheat that. Here we go. I remember spinning bar stools. I remember her. Air smelling of cheap cigarettes and forgotten happy hours. See? She used to take me all the time, and at times it felt as if the world had an envy for my existence. But as time passed, she would drink so much, words would turn into mere sounds, thoughts into lost items like buried keys and the bottom of a packed purse. But I sat there, thinking, damn, this is what love must be. Because out of everyone in the world, she is here with me, she chose me, it is her and me. I remember spinning bar stools. Her touch, like the feeling of euphoria, seconds before her last breath, her face smell of broken promises and dreams never written. Each breath a mix of fermenting wheat, nicotine, and wasted youth. Her hair, shorter than my life expectancy. She was mine, I was hers, it was us and the world, until without a word, without a sentence, she left. I was only six. Her with her such and such on the rocks and that on tap, and me, an imitation, getting intoxicated off Pepsi and my adoration for her existence. The bar was right on the corner of never had a childhood, and I must have been a survived abortion, and if you get lost, take a left at dead. See, she had what many called a dependency problem, and due to the fact that I depended on her, I guess technically I had one too. I often contemplated changing my name to Jack and Coke in order to get her attention, but even then, my life would still be on the rocks. I remember thinking, she loved me, there was no doubt, and so this woman walked out. And I often missed her, and every time a birthday passed and I saw a bottle of vodka or horse stories about her alcoholism and how it caused an inability for her to properly accept the fact that she was a homosexual high school dropout with less sense than dollars, less of a future than a past, and more of a chance to kill herself than ever to know herself. Young mother doomed to stay young, but never be a mother. Because see, we live in a world with more... With more Cause see, we live, in a, we live in a world with more babies and fathers, more mothers who are babies, babies from babies, having sex with babies and having babies, and baby, we need to stop growing up and stop acting like babies. Because I remember spending bar stools. I remember suffering this hatred, lies, tears, suicide attempts, crayons, love, pain, goodbyes, bottles, cigarettes, more suicide attempts, abandonment, forgotten Christmases, forgotten birthdays, forgotten Mondays, Tuesdays, leap years, and most of all, forgotten me's, forgotten me's, forgotten me's. Why have you forgotten me? Did you think about me? Because I thought about you. I thought about you like the earth thinks about the sun when the moon is out. I thought about you like flowers in the drought think about raindrops. I thought about you like a poet thinks about words. I thought about you like a child in devastating pain thinks about the father he never knew and the mother who was too drunk to ever know him. When I was six, I started crying tears. I have written books of poetry and memoirs of memories. Because even though you may not remember me, I remember you. I remember you, I remember you. And I remember spending bar stools and what I went through. Because if those stools took away your mother, you would remember them too. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, uh,